what would be important for the NGOs to tell to the people who are planning to migrate? When they are going to migrate to the Gulf countries, what do you think that should be the information that they have about kafala system and any other thing that is important from the countries they are moving to? I think we can start with the slide that we never got to. I'm um, just list two quick things. So one thing that we hear a lot from prospective domestic workers in parts of Africa is that they think that once they get to the country, they can change their job. They can move on from domestic work and become something else. Often these are women who are, you know, highly educated and highly skilled. And I think it's so very important to emphasize that it's really difficult to change employers. And it's a completely other thing to change what your visa profession is, particularly as of domestic work and into something that's in the private sector, into something that's under the labor law. As far as I think I know, there is only one country which has a very limited scope to even enable this, which is in Kuwait. But even then, it's a very, and, and the UAE. But even then, it's, it's not as easy as a process as some people think it is. That is part of a migrant worker's, you know, calculation into deciding whether or not they are going to go. Sometimes they're giving up, you know, decent jobs back home, thinking that they could get something better in their particular sector abroad. And it's, it's just often not the case. And then the second thing is, I think we just have to be very realistic with workers, you know, emphasizing that they do have rights and that that can be very empowering and that there are standards that exist for them. But... We hear of so many migrants who do everything absolutely right, who do fight for their rights, and they still end up with nothing. So it's really important to make it clear that you know these laws are not always enforced, that if there is an issue, the legal system can be very slow. And just, you know, none of this is to dissuade or persuade someone from making their decision to migrate, but making sure that they're fully informed of what the on-ground realities for them actually are. Also, I think important to tell them that there is nothing called a free visa. People pay a lot of money for the so-called free visas, thinking they can come, find a job, work wherever they want. They can do all of that, but they're doing it illegally. What they're doing is illegal as far as countries of uh, destination are concerned. So the free visa is something that does not exist in any of the countries. Also, a lot of workers come on tourist visa and then the agent has told them, come on tourist visa and there you'll find a job. Almost next to impossible to do that. <coughs> UAE allows to a degree, but even they are uh, tightening up. So these two things, which a lot of workers uh, you know, are trapped by, is the free visa and the tourist visa. Both of that is not legal as per these systems. The other thing that NGOs can talk to migrant workers is we have seen pre-departure, pre-decision training in quite a few countries, and we feel that it is not very well-structured, well-formulated. A lot of it focuses on the actual jobs, the chores that they have to do at home. It doesn't focus on their rights. So to introduce more rights-based modules, to encourage workers to build a community before they leave, I think some of the things, again, for domestic workers particularly, all of these countries are going to work under great isolation with very restricted communication. Very, uh, Many of them don't even have an off day or a telephone. How do we then talk to them about protecting, right? It's a very difficult thing. So if NGOs can connect them to the community before they leave, 